to Philadelphia? Well, this will make five, Miss Real. Provided we don't miss the connection with the eastbound coach. Of course, we could drive this wagon all the way to Philadelphia, right up on the front steps of the legislature. Oh! Oh, Daniel Boone, I have been bouncing around in this wagon like a bag of oats for two and a half days. I don't worry, Becky. You'll be riding on a nice, big, soft cushion for too long. Fort Potterville is the way station, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Fort Potterville. You know, Becky, I think we have some friends living here there. We have who? Simon Jarvis and his family. I think they moved back there. Oh, yes, I remember him. He cost me $50 once. How, Mingo? Well, I made the mistake of wagering that he couldn't wrestle a full-grown elk to the ground, Israel, and hold him to the count of 10. And? They were still counting when I left. <laughs> pa, why can't we drive the wagon right up to the front steps of the legislature? Is there any law against it? Well, son, there might as well be. <laughs> Get up! Elizabeth! Maybe if you just stood outside in the doorway with it, they'd remember. Simon, it, it isn't even loaded. Elizabeth! Simon, are you going to sit there and let them take your son away from you? Well, Scout, how do you feel this morning? Where's my rock candy? Oh, I hit it. Where? Oh, in town, back in the store. That's where we're headed. Is Daddy coming too? No, uh... Daddy's staying right here, ain't you, Daddy? Pa, please. We've had this all out. The boy comes with me. I'm not going to have my grandson raised by no yellow belly. Now, you can come along and help raise him right, or you can stay here and watch him grow into a whiskey sponge. Make up your mind. Grandma, what's a yellow belly? Simon. Simon, please tell me what to do. When I'm dead, marry him. <laughs> Why wait? Six months ago, you would have run and hit if he'd looked at you cross-eyed. Now get out. The old man says if you put one foot inside Potterville, Play the hide off of you. Get out of this house! Get out of my house! I'll be right outside if you want me, man. Get out! Simon, I gotta go with the boy, don't I? Don't I? Where's... Shut the door tight behind you. Mr. 
Mr. Fryman. Mrs. X. Now, what can I do for you this morning? I felt I had to come here to say something on behalf of all the women of Potterville. You want me to cut off the liquor? I most certainly do. But that is not why I am here today. I have come to thank you. Thank me? Mm -hmm. What for? For what you've done. For taking poor Jeremy Jarvis away from that... that excuse for a man. And to assure you that if you need any help at all, a woman's touch, some advice... Are you sure you can spare it? Elizabeth, I didn't know you'd come back with Jeremy. Well, I think that's the best possible solution. If you ask Brand me... Brand new, just in from the Carolinas. Are you interested? You have no reason to mock me. You know a widow cannot wear a dress made from cloth like that. And if it weren't for Simon Jarvis, I wouldn't be a widow. Thank you again. Good day. I'd say poor Mr. Hicks is better off where he is. You don't really mean that. No. Keep your hands where I can see them. Mm. Certainly not the friendliest host I've ever run into. Tie him up, this stinking Choctaw. That's Cherokee, friend. What's the difference? About 400 miles. I always liked a cautious man. That's my friend, my wagon, my luggage, and I'll appreciate it if you'll take your hands off all three. It's all right, Luke. This is Daniel Boone from Kentucky. Well, you're passing through at a very edgy time. My name's Fryman. I met you a long time ago at Twin Oaks. Well, what about him? Well, I'm sure Mr. Boone will vouch for the Indian. I don't have to vouch for him. He's as good as any man here. Well, that's all right, Daniel. I gather from all this that you've had trouble with the Choctaw lately. Trouble? Ten survivors out of 50? That counts trouble. Well, let's all go inside. All of us. Oh, you must be Mrs. Boone. Hey, let me help you down. Thank you, Mr. Fryman. Elizabeth, you remember Becky? Oh, Elizabeth, it's been so long. That's a fine-looking boy you have there. Well, where's Simon? You mean my son-in-law? He's dead. Pa. As far as we're concerned, he's dead. Hey, what's your name, Sonny? It's Real Boone. I got a young fella you got to meet. He's not your age. You like rock candy? Oh, I think it's a little close to eating time. Oh, we, we'd be happy to have you eat with us. Come on, inside. Uh, well, that old man Fryman's got some peculiar ideas who he shares his table with. Yeah, I didn't know Simon was a friend of Daniel Boone's. Simon was a lot of things, and I'm sick of hearing about him, Boone or not. And I don't like the idea of a redskin eating in the Potterville Tavern. You think you're fit enough to take it up with the old man? Yeah, I'm fit enough, but <laughs> I ain't fool enough. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't eat another bite. Well, I could. That's the spirit. Where'd you leave your appetite, Scout? Oh. Mommy, when's Daddy coming? Oh, why don't you and Israel go out back and see uh, if Mr. Boone's horse is cared for? Is that all right with oh, you? Oh, of course. Run ahead, dear. Sure. I'll get you fixed up at the inn. It's comfortable, clean. Before we go. I'd like to know about Simon. Your coach isn't due until the day after tomorrow. And I'm not going to get on it until I learn about him. You know, there are ears here that maybe shouldn't hear about this. Well, I could go out in the back with the children, Mr. Fryman, but uh, I'll hear about it eventually. All right. Simon Jarvis has disgraced himself. But worse than that, he's responsible for the death of most of the able-bodied men that lived in this town. He's a coward. The last word I had of Simon Jarvis was in a war dispatch that said... I know what it said. That General Gates himself pinned a medal on Simon's chest for bravery. That's right. I grew up with Simon. 
I hunted with him. I fought with him. And I never once saw him scared. Boone, two weeks ago, the Choctaws raided a couple of our outlying farms, burned them down. Now, we decided to look for them before they turned south and attacked us. Naturally, having a hero of the rebellion in our midst, uh, we elected Simon to lead us. We split up into two bunches, our main force on both sides of the river, and I was leading them. And then our best rifleman in reserve up on the hill under Simon. All he had to do was to give the order for them to move in once the fighting started down below. Turn the Indians' flank and make them think they were surrounded. And? He never gave that order. He froze. He held his men back until they went out on their own. No orders, no signals. Just 40-odd men all trying to take command at once. It was the worst slaughter I ever saw. And you saw Simon freeze. No. And just like you, I couldn't believe it. And what changed your mind? When the fighting was over, Simon was nowhere to be found. But then, when those that was left of us got back here to Potterville, I... there he was, drunk. He hasn't drawn a sober breath since. Scared to face all them widows. He just sat there, looked up at me, and gave me this. What good is a man like that to anybody? Someday there'll be another raid, maybe near his cabin. Do you think I can let my daughter and my grandson live up there with nothing to protect him but what used to be a man? You must be tired. I'll take you over to the inn. Dan? Becky, you go on over and get us a room. I'll be along directly. Oh, give Simon my best. I wouldn't advise going up there. Mr. Fryman, with all due respect, I'd still like to hear Simon's side of the story. Thank you for a fine meal, Mr. Fryman. Any of you fellows tell me where... Simon Jarvis's cabin is located. It's up the ridge, quarter mile, second cabin. Much obliged. And go, uh, would you mind keeping an eye on Becky and Israel while I'm gone? Of course. You can't miss it, Boone. Just follow the yellow streak. <laughs> <laughs> Simon? Simon! They're coming. They're past the creek. Keep your heads down. Simon, it's me. Boom. Oh, no. I see one. Don't you, Grandpa? 
Why don't you two go over by the fire and discuss the state of the union over this new jar of rock candy that just come in? I guess I better be going. Ma will be wondering where I'm at. Well, in that case, uh, it's a long ride to Philadelphia. Thank you. Thank you. Well, goodbye, Mr. Fryman. I guess I'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, come here, you. Don't you say hello to me anymore? Hello, Luke. Uncle Luke. You ain't my uncle, is he, Grandpa? Scout, how would you like to go hunting with me someday? When? Oh, maybe Saturday. You ever going hunting? No, sir. My daddy wouldn't show me. Uh, said I was too little yet. Well, you got a lot of catching up to do. In the meantime, uh, how'd you like to help me unpack them stores? All right. All right, boy. You know, I'm going to tell you once more. Don't crowd me and don't crowd her, Uncle Luke. You don't talk to Boone that way, and he's crowding you plenty. Well, Boone's leaving on the eastbound coach. You want to do the same? Look, uh, somebody's got to take care of Liz and the young'un. You ain't gonna live forever. You know, you got a picture of owning all this someday, haven't you? No, I never said that. You haven't got the gall to say it. Now, why don't you get out of here? I'm sick of looking at you. You know, we used to be friends. That's what I... That's what I thought. Dan? Is that Dan? That's Dan. Hey, go away. Catch that string of wall and pack all by myself? Now, come on. We can have that mess back in camp with Sonna. I don't want to. Not today. Where's my jug? Well, what do you mean, not today? We're breaking camp this afternoon. It's now or never, Simon. Well, make it never. Now, clear out of here. I don't want you to see me like this. Who sent you here anyway? Please go away, Dan. Not just yet. Come on, I'll give you a hand on it. I'll make you clear out of here. I'll make you... You got no right to bust in here when I'm asleep. That's gonna cost you, mister. No. You trip me up. You dirty low-down skunk. You don't fight fair. I told you once, twice to get out of my house. Now I'm gonna throw you out. If you're still here when I get on my feet. No. Oh. Open, Israel. How come? Keeps the air circulating. What's your mother up to? She and Mrs. Jarvis are talking. Must be pretty interesting. Why? She told me to clear out and come on in here. Can I ask you a question? At your service, Master Boone. How can you read books when nobody makes you? I always figured when I grew up, that would be the first thing I'd be able to stop. Unfortunately, I developed the habit at a very early age. It's difficult to break. What are you reading? Oh, nothing that would interest you. How do you know? Well, it's just a lot of stuff about wars and a king who gets killed and witches and haunted castles and a moving forest, that sort of thing. Uh, what's the name of it? Uh, Macbeth. Was he the king that got killed? Well, not exactly. You see, he kills the king, and then he becomes the king. And finally... Well, I trouble your young head with that. Grown-ups never tell me anything. 
Yes, I could look it up myself. Well, I suppose one quick look wouldn't hurt. Thanks, Mingo. Good night, Israel. Good night. Simon, you came to with only one bucket that time. Oh, I can't show up, me be. <laughs> Is getting it pointed in the right direction. Now listen, maybe if I, it would help steady me. No. Oh, Dan, you don't understand. Well, I don't know why a horse drinks poison water, but I try and stop it. I know it's a waste, and I hate waste as much as you do. Dan. Aren't you planning on leaving me any? Simon, I want you to tell me what happened. I need you sober for that. I don't want to be sober. It's a free country, isn't it? Sure. You ought to know. You want a medal for helping to make it that way. <laughs> oh, Dan, you take the prize. When all else fails, wave the flag. <laughs> well, it's a good flag. Dan, I... I don't know what brought you out this way. I got enough of my senses to know that you mean well, and I'm grateful to you. But I'd be more than grateful if you give it all up as a bad job. Simon, I'm going to help you whether you want me to or not. And I'd be a sight easier if you'd help just a little, for old time's sake. All right. You always could out talk me. Help me up. Uh. Would there be some kind of work in Boonesboro? Uh, for a woman with a boy to look after? I mean, I can farm, cook, and sew. You don't want to do that. Of course I don't want to. But I can't have Jeremy grow up with his father not a half mile away from him like... like some ghost that won't rest. Elizabeth. Maybe Dan can snap him out of it. Now hold still, Simon. I never went to Barber in college. What are you so nervous about? Oh, remembering things, I guess. About the raid on the Choctaws? Oh, that and other things. 
You ready to tell me about it? Yeah, you know all there is to know. Old man Fryman, he's a good storyteller. He don't leave nothing out. Did you freeze, Simon? <laughs> you know, that, that's one thing I've noticed since I've been in this fighting business. Everybody's looking for the quickest answer. Did you win or did you lose? Did you freeze or did you fight? Are you dead or are you alive? That was old Major Benson's way. He was my commanding officer. He, he looked for those simple answers. He'd say, men, come back with your shield or on it. <laughs> Pretty catchy, huh? <laughs> you know what? Long about the second week with the regiment, he came back on it. <laughs> All this uh, by way of leading up to something, eh, Simon? Well, after he was killed, they, they gave me the command. Battlefield commissioner was. Bad mistake. Why? I would have said it was a real good idea. Mm. So would I. That just shows how much you and me know. Hey, is it, is it cold in here? No, not especially. I'm beginning to feel pretty poorly, Dan. You don't suppose that... Simon, I smashed them all. Now, do you think you can walk? I don't know. Well, let's find out. Oh. Here we go. Oh. You're doing just fine. Oh, I miss that floor. And that bear. Me and that bear, we spent a lot of time together lately. Oh, that's just fine. I want to keep your eyes up and walk. Oh. All right. Anything you say. Anything the colonel says, the colonel is going to get. All right, boy. Oh. Oh. Let's, let's save the mountain climbing for tomorrow, all right? All right, Simon. What we ought to do is get some food in you and a little coffee. Then we need to get some supplies and fix up your furniture. Oh, wait a minute. I'm still tired out from walking across that floor. Well, again, I want you to walk it one more time. No, I don't think I can, Dan. I know you can. All the way over to bed. Oh, oh that boy, Simon. Now you know you're going to be able to sleep for a little while. Becky, give us a bad time over this. Counterpaint. Mm. Now listen, Simon. Mm. You may have a bad dream. You've had bad dreams before, but mm. if you do, I want you to say to yourself, it's just a bad dream. Mm. I want you to start right now saying it over and over. Mm. It's just a bad dream. Oh, it's just a bad dream. It's just a bad dream. I'll be back as soon as I can. It's just a bad dream. It's just a bad dream. It's just a bad dream. <laughs> They're both sleeping. How did you find Simon? It's going to be an uphill fight. Anything I can do? Yes, there is. First off, you can... Huh? What's all this whispering about? Well, to make sure that no one wakes you up. I wasn't asleep. <coughs> Mom's real tuckered, though. Something keeping you up? I've been thinking. Every time I doze off, I start thinking. And that does it. Uh, anything in particular? A whole bunch of stuff. But mainly, how come Jeremy's grandfather says that Jeremy's father's dead? He ain't, is he? No, Israel. He's, uh, he's alone and he's very tired, but he's not dead. 
How come everybody's mad at him? Just because he got scared? Well, it could be something like that. You know, sometimes a man is a fool when he's not scared. And then sometimes when a man thinks he's scared, he's just being careful. Now, you must have had at least a hundred lectures on being careful, haven't you? Yes, sir, but was Jeremy's father being scared or careful? Well, I don't know. We hope to find out. Hey, listen, you go in there and get some sleep. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. Mm -hmm. I read ten pages already. Really? Sort of long-winded, but somehow I don't seem to mind. I'd like to finish it sometime. Night. Shakespeare. He's quite a boy. <laughs> well, he knows how to ask the questions. The trick is being able to answer them. What about Simon? Well, I have something here to show you. Somebody's been feeding him a lot of whiskey lately. I'd like to find out who. Now, this is the trademark, more than likely, of the seller, not of the jug maker. Well, it's highly unlikely that Mr. Fryman will be selling him any. He won't let him in the door. Well, I'm going to be going down there after a while to get you some supplies. After I leave, why don't you investigate Fryman's store? Good. With all this waiting around, I'm getting as jumpy as Israel. Just don't let anybody see you. This town is as edgy if it's been raining gunpowder. Boone? Ah, uh, no, thank you, Fryman. I've got some purchases to make. Need about uh, five pounds of flour, three pounds of coffee, two pounds of salt, a pound of sugar, and a side of bacon. Well, you went out and seen for yourself, huh? I've seen liquored up men before. That's not what I mean. I mean the other thing. The fear in his eyes and his face. Are you going to fill my order, or aren't you? I'd hate to think that you were taking liberties with my good nature, Boone. And a side of bacon. I agreed to leave him, Pa, not to let him starve to death. Back on the shelf. I knew you was a thief the minute I laid eyes on you. Now get moving. You find an Indian, and you find a thief.
Was it you, Luke? Sneaking out there every night to see that he stayed drunk? Well, <laughs> it's interesting to see the way that the liquor works on people. It takes all the fight out of some. And then again, you take a nice, friendly crowd, and you turn them into a lynch mob in no time at all. Watch. Hey, look, everybody! What I found here in the cellar! I caught a thief! shaking there so much anymore, Dan. Good. How's, uh, how's she getting along? If you want to know, go see for yourself. She asked about me? She did. Why didn't she come? Well, suppose you tell me, Simon. Remember I told you about that battlefield commission? Mm-hmm. Well, it, it was a mistake. Too much, too much dependent on me, too, too many decisions that I had no business making. Dan, your friend Mingo, Luke has the men all stirred up. He says he caught Mingo robbing my father's store. Mingo's with him? Be careful. They're talking about hanging and they're getting drunk enough to do it. Dan? That's good coffee. Dan made it. The hanging's too good for you. Let's just take them out and shoot them. Are you going to ask me what I was doing down there? This ain't no lion contest. It's a trial. Without a defense? All right, what were you looking for down there? Thank you for asking. I was looking for a particular... Settle, 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 Luke! Luke, you gone crazy? No! It's the other way around. You're getting too old and too soft to run this town. Another minute, that Indian got into powder and the spare rifles. Tomorrow morning, they've been a raid. You're the one that's not thinking clear anymore, Fryman. Just what is it you want to do? Same thing I want to do when he rode in. Hang the Indian and go after Boone. It won't be necessary. Now, if you'll just back away from him. You too, Mr. Fryman. I'll take that. I found the donkey on the jug, Daniel. It uh, had quite a kick. That's what I figured. Are you ready to get out of here? Boy, I think I might be persuaded to leave. Well, don't bet on it. There's one rifle against ten. Not exactly, Luke. My rifle against your neck. Unless they get away from that door before I count to three. Don't let them bluff you, Luke. One. Two. You boys better clear away from that door. <laughs> you still gotta fight your way out of town. Pleasure, Luke. Ten against two's just about your style. Ten against three. Well, look who just bobbed up to surface. Did you get out of here, yellow belly, before I set fire to your tail? I told you never to set foot in here again. And so you did. And here I am. Hello, Mingo. Simon. Just drop in for a drink? If so, Luke is the man to see, Simon. He's the one that's been supplying you with the best in stock. Oh, is that a fact? 
You know, Luca, a little boy like you got no business playing games with grown men. Now, why don't you pack up and clear out of here? Well, uh, when I settle with Boone and the Indian, I'm at your service. Mm. You'll be in no condition. Uh, I know it's asking a lot. He's all yours, Simon. Uh, now, uh, Dan, if you and uh, Mingo keep about six of them off me, I think that uh, Luke will have a fair chance. Well, it's your party, Simon. <laughs> That's all. I told you never to set foot in here again. Now get out! Now first I want to tell you what happened with that fight with the Choctaws. Don't try to weasel out of it! What you think? Just because I whale a tar out of a Rivertown loafer and an old pirate like your pa? Well, let me tell you how I won that medal. It was my first big command. And the British, they, they moved in the cannon. It was going to lose it for me. I went crazy, and I ordered a charge against it. And I'd led that charge right up into the cannon's mouth. And that cannon, it, it jammed. It jammed. It didn't kill nobody. And they gave me a medal. A medal. When if it hadn't been for that fluke, it would have been a court-martial. But I didn't think about that. And I, I came home a hero instead of the 
crazy scared fool that I really was. Then the, the fight with the Choctaws, and it hit me up on the ridge. The reason I ordered that charge on the cannon was because I was so scared of getting killed that I, I couldn't think straight. But this time I, I wasn't scared, and I, I waited. But the men, the men that were with me, they, they didn't understand, and, and they charged. And them Choctaw that didn't have more than three rifles between them, all of a sudden they, they found a pack of men within arrow range and knife range. And I realized that I, I got a medal for, for doing the wrong thing, and I'd be called a coward for, for doing the right one. I walked away from there, and I, I started drinking. And tonight, I, I stopped drinking. You know, the, the truth can be so foolish sometimes that it's, it's better off to let it lay. But if this town is, is going to grow, it's got to stop depending on heroes and start depending on itself. I talk too much. I, I always did. Come on, son. We're going home. You coming? Why didn't he tell me? Why, oh, evidently? Must have been some fight. Why didn't anybody wake me up? I didn't everybody out. This place is closed for repairs. I uh, think we'd better get back to bed. in there. See? you got to be careful. Hey, Scout. Hello, Grandpa. Well. Mingo, Israel. Well, come on in. Oh, no. I didn't know if I'd be welcome. Hello, Mr. Fryman. Mr. Boone. Uh, Daniel. Elizabeth. Uh, you hungry? Oh. Wouldn't mind a bite. Oh, Simon, uh, this belongs to you. After what I said, you think I want any part of that? Simon, you ought to take it. You earned it last night. You mean that brawl? No, I mean when you walked from there to here and back again. Twice. <laughs> I'll take it for the time being. Sit down, Pa. You make me nervous. You too, Simon. Oh, I brought some uh, rock candy for the boy. If you don't mind. You know, I don't think I can stand much of you on your best behavior. <laughs> Jeremy! Israel! Come see what your grandpa brought. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Grandpa. Can I take a piece for Mingo? Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Grandpa. I think I'll have a piece myself. Well, why not? <laughs> 